The scenery changes with each step. Korean architecture is about bringing together nature and men as one, about respecting the order of nature. In Seoul, the past and the future converge. The Royal Palace has always been the center of this remarkable city. The Royal Palace was the pinnacle of architecture of its time, as only the best master builders and craftsmen had the honor of participating in its construction. Changdeokgung Palace, the most well-preserved of the Joseon period palaces, was added to the UNESCO World Heritage List in 1997. In particular, the rear garden, also known as the secret garden, is famous for its lotus pond, pavilions, and landscaped trees and flowers that are set in tranquil harmony. Changdeokgung Palace is located on a site with hills and mounts, so all the buildings and gardens are designed to harmonize with natural topographic features. Another notable aspect of Changdeokgung Palace is its intentional deviation from symmetry. In Junjung, the main hall where the kings carried out official affairs of the state is reached after many turns from the main gate, Donhwamun. Other buildings are designed with similar intent. When two doors face each other directly, the connecting path is offset from symmetry, and when the paths are straight, the doors are offset on an angle. The axial lines stray from symmetry, giving an ease to the movement of the people in the space. This deviation creates a dynamic and almost rhythmical spatial experience. Gyeongbokgung Palace. Grand and elegant, it is the main palace of the Chosen Dynasty. To create an atmosphere of grandeur and authority, the building alignment follows an orderly axial system. But there is an exception. The heart of the palace, Kunjongjun, does not align with the mountain peak. The serene rhythm that comes from being outside the grid is repeated here, even at the main palace, Gyeongbokgung. Hangukonsugun, 뒤에 백악 봉우리를 경복궁 건물 중심축에 두질 않습니다. 옆으로 비켜 있죠. 그렇게 함부로 해가지고 주변 자연과 건물이 상당히 뭔가 이렇게 율동하는 듯한 그런 느낌을 갖게 합니다. Buildings of Gyeongbokgung Palace are graciously laid out on a level site. With rhythmical spatial qualities unique to Korean architecture, it elegantly blends in with its natural surroundings from all angles and viewpoints. The huge scale of China's Forbidden City is overwhelming. The main halls are placed along the north-south axis, and the other buildings are positioned on both sides of the axis in strict symmetry. Nijo Castle of Japan has a moat around the perimeter to protect the site against intruders, the overall landscape design is about recreating simple beauty that takes its inspiration from nature. When compared to the palaces of China and Japan, it becomes apparent that the Korean palace places great emphasis on harmony with nature and respecting its order.
Zhongmyo sits like a tranquil island deep in the woods. Zhongmyo is a royal ancestral shrine where the ancestral tablets of the late kings and queens of the Joseon dynasty are kept and services are held to pay them respect. The hall seems to stretch on forever and the repetitive columns add a sacred ambiance to this holy place. The royal ancestral shrine ceremony and music have been perfectly preserved for 500 years and have been recognized as UNESCO World Heritage. Zhongmyo is a building for the dead. There are no special ornaments or decorations here, just the long row of columns colored in a simple red, and the stairs carved like clouds and rainbows to symbolize the ascent to the realm of gods, nothing more. Once you step through the main gates, a path between lush trees will lead you inside. There is another path right within that path. It is Odo, the path the kings used to take when they paid their respects. The paths of Zhongmyo are not straight. They bend, disappear, then reappear as if they have a life of their own. Even Zhongmyo, that is considered a realm of the gods, is no exception to the design philosophy of traditional Korean architecture. The flat stones laid on the ground before Zhongjun, the main hall, look like a quilted carpet, adding texture to the open space. The space is empty, yet filled at the same time. Yongyangjun, to the west of the main hall, is smaller in size and modest in detail. From a stationary point, it is impossible to see the end of the main hall. On the other hand, Yangyangjun feels more intimate. The two halls complement each other, and the contrast adds to the overall harmony of Zhongmyo. The shrine is a place filled with symbols and allusions to life and death. The road to the temple. The winding paths through the valleys lead to Sungsungyo, the bridge where the heavenly maids take flight into the sky. Next stop is Sunamsa, a temple of 1,000 years. It is a fine example of traditional temple architecture. Sunamsa does not look grand or pompous. Some spaces feel cozy, like a small country villa. Some spaces feel like a hermit's cave set deep in the mountains. They all come together to create a complex architecture that has depth. Natural spring water spouts from the fountain in the backyard. Garden and landscaping is an integral component of architecture to complete the picture. Pyeongsan Sowon lies tucked away at the bottom of Mount Hwasan. A Sowon was a kind of educational institute for Confucian teachings in the Joseon period. The buildings are far from grand, yet Pyongsan Sowon attracts admirers. Standing on the tall and carefree Mandeiru, it is easy to see why. The Nakdonggang River and the mountain cliffs come together with the man-made structure in balanced harmony. In contrast to the spectacular scenery, the buildings themselves are chaste and humble. In the yard, a myrtle tree stands symbolizing a virtuous Confucian scholar whose life is true to his beliefs. The architecture of Sowon embodies the philosophy of the Confucian scholars. 
and Dosan Sowon is the mecca of Korean Confucian history. Dosan Sodong was the starting point of the renowned Confucian Academy, Dosan Sowon. The respected Confucian scholar Twege Yi Huang designed and built it himself. Twege Yi Huang said that a man of virtue only needs three rooms. So Dosan Sodong was made up of only three rooms, an open deck for teaching students, a sleeping room, and a kitchen. Despite the humble size, its prominence is recognized in the history of Korean architecture because it demonstrates the belief that man is only a part of nature and that architecture is the starting point for bridging the two together. The wind across the bamboo forest is refreshing to the ears. So sang the scholars inspired by poetry as they sat here. The name Sosewan means a garden with sounds of crystal water flowing. The garden is designed as a getaway for restful living. Here a scholar could study and meditate in peace surrounded by nature. When friends came to visit, they would celebrate the joyful occasion at a special place. The visitors come through the bamboo forest and are led across the stream to the pagoda standing on the rocks for a truly transcendent experience surrounded by nature. There they would amuse themselves with wine and poetry, enjoying the scenery and the company. The pagoda exemplifies the desire of Korean people to be one with nature. Strategically located, pagodas complete the scenery. Korean people liked to share such gifts of nature in the company of others. Yangdong village has a history of over 550 years. Uh, 안쪽에 A remarkable feature of this house is the connection to the yards. Upon following the small path, a spacious kitchen and another yard will greet you. The yards are an element of void to balance the house and also a space for connection and interaction. The yards vary in size and shape, but they all have the role of bringing together the separate buildings. Influenced by Confucian teachings, the design of Hanok, a traditional Korean house, separates the living quarters of men and women. This old house has a screening wall in front of Sarangche, the men's quarter, so that the women can move around with ease. 
all the buildings stood separately, but it was important that all the buildings, people, and nature work together as one. Chagyang is one of those joys. Windows are strategically located into walls to bring the natural sceneries into the house. Sitting in a room and yet still connected to nature. Rather than landscaping and decorating the house with gardens, nature is brought into the house. The natural surroundings become the garden for the house. The main living room, which is completely open to the front, also has another opening to the backyard for views. These vignette windows use the concept of layers. The house is made up of separate buildings and spaces intricately connected, and they create unique and individual views from various points. There are doors within doors and windows within windows. The doors and windows act as frames for the ever-changing scenery. It is like having landscape paintings that transform with the change of seasons. Another advantage of Hanok is that it is environmental. Paper, stones, clay, wood. The building materials come straight from nature. In particular, wood is used extensively and in various forms. Hanok is often referred to as the art of wood. The traditional method relies solely on precise joint work. It is an extremely scientific and sophisticated method of utilizing minimum material to create space. Besides wood, the main building material, all the other materials come from nature also. The walls are made from stones gathered locally, cemented with clay and straw mixed with water. The walls may look weak, but they are more resilient and last longer than concrete walls. The stones can also be reused over and over again, so it is economical and environmentally friendly. These natural building materials create a healthy and green living space. Ondol is the finest example of sustainable design. The heat from the fire is used simultaneously for cooking and floor heating. Hanok has both a timber board floor used in hot weather and heated masonry floor used in cold weather in the one house for temperature control. It is a uniquely matched but extremely efficient system. The modest Hanok is the culmination of science and the roof is the climax of a Hanok. The elegant roof line resembles the spread wings of a crane. The wide eaves stop the rain from coming into the house and protect the timber parts from rotting. The angle of the eaves is designed according to the movement of the sun. In summer, when the sun is high, the eaves keep the rooms in shade. In winter, the sunlight penetrates into the rooms, giving warmth and light. The roof and the eaves of a hanok reveal the most graceful way a structure can meet the sky. It adds the final touch to complete a traditional Korean house.
Such traditions of Korean architecture have begun to fade in the 20th century. With the Japanese occupation, the Korean War, and industrialization. However, efforts for modern interpretations of traditional architecture are taking their place. Jeollusan Martyrs Museum is set within its natural surroundings without intrusion to the mountain. The design philosophy of embracing nature and the aesthetic beauty of traditional Korean architecture is evident in its design. The French Embassy in Korea boasts a unique beauty that is both traditional and modern. The delicate and refined roofline is inspired by the roof and eaves of traditional Korean architecture. The old building in dark brick and the new building in glass complement each other, just like how the past and present coexist in harmony. Robert Fauser is an American professor who is living in Korea. He has been voicing his love for the traditional Korean house through Hanok preservation campaigns, and now he is building his own near the Gyeongbokgung Palace. And another wonderful thing about a Hanok is this not wonderful roof, um, and the roof is uh, th these round beams, these are called sokkare, and they are visible on the inside in much of the house. Um, and then there's another roof coming out. And then the, between the wood part of the roof and the roof tiles that you can see uh, at the, at the, you know, on the top of the roof, between that is a layer of dirt, okay? And that is, when you think about a hanok, this layer of dirt between the wood part and the tiles is a very important part of a hanok because the layer of dirt helps insulate the house, it keeps it warm in the winter, and it keeps it cool in the summer. So this is a really wonderful, you know, th this part of a hanok is very, very, very nice. The hanok that he is living in now has had its interior renovated for modern lifestyle, but it still has all the qualities of a traditional house. a house that holds the trees, the wind, and the sun. These houses are coming back to us again. Developments in modern history have taken their toll on traditional Korean architecture. But traditional Korean architecture is one that knows how to harmonize with its environment. It is blossoming once again as it readmits itself for its new surroundings in a new age. <laughs>